On July 13, 2014, there was a shooting in my community. A young man named Juan Ceballos was shot and killed in front of his home just a few blocks from where I live. The murder was charged as a hate crime because Juan identified as bisexual. Juan's death was a wake-up call because I also identify as bisexual and I want to feel safe in my own community. Mecca, where I'm from, is a predominantly Latino community 82 miles from the Mexican border. Here, word gets around fast, but in this case, when our community found out it was a hate crime, the conversation stopped there. We decided to interview people on the street to discover the climate of sexual orientation and acceptance in our community. We found that while most people were polite, they weren't taking the issue seriously. Perhaps because most of our parents work in agriculture, they don't see the issue as a priority. Or maybe it's traditional culture that's getting in the way of us having a real conversation. Even after when it was declared, like I said, the community went silent. We all went silent. <laughs> Yo me di cuenta cuando me levanté que iba al baño a las 2 de la mañana. Me asomé a la ventana y, y vi que había mucha luz y eran los policías que ya andaban allí en el carro donde él estaba allá. Okay. Y hasta otro día que yo me levanté salí a ver a su tío y le pregunté y dijo que había sido ese accidente. Yo estaba en el pensamiento que lo había agarrado el policía para llevárselo o como cuando que para manejar que manejan recio pues, ¿verdad? Y, Cuando me sorprendí fue que vi que estaba acordonada la calle y mucho policía. En este mundo, porque todos venimos aquí, entonces a nosotros lo que nos resta es respetarlos, respetar a todo mundo, sea quien sea, quererlo y apoyarlos en lo que se pueda. Para mí esos son mis pensamientos. Lo demás, las demás personas no sé lo que ellas opinen, pero mi opinión es respetarlos y apoyarlos en lo que a uno le corresponde. Uh, especially because when we found out, it was because of, well, one of the causes might have been because of sexuality. A lot of us were shocked about it, but most of us just, well, I, I don't know what to say. We all know that there are people out there, you know, that just aren't sure or are afraid of being or showing who they are. So, that's pretty much what we're trying to do recently, just try and get people to come to our meetings. It's just hard for people, especially being brought up that way, to hear something like that and not know how to cope with certain issues that come up in the community. And there's not really that much people you can, you feel safe with or are really open about being safe. The Sheriff's Department, uh, through this uh, current Sheriff, Stan Sniff, and the executive team and all the members of the department are committed to uh, putting forth policies and training that uh, makes all the people in the community feel comfortable coming to us. We've been, in recent years, um, revised our policies and put out additional... We visited a local Catholic leader who declined to be on camera. We felt this contributed to the silence. I do have neighbors that live across the street from me. I have a cousin that, who is gay and, and my neighbor, she's lesbian, so, and I grew up with her, so I kinda, she told me as, like, as I grew up that she's lesbian, that she likes girls, and I was like, okay. When I see how other people are treating, um, are discriminating other people who are I don't, I don't think it's right.
uh, estaba un grupito de amigos, entonces yo llegué porque estaba un amigo mío, lo saludé, hola, ¿cómo estás? Bien, no, pues qué bueno, ah, pues uh, mucho gusto en verte, sí, estaba ya el relajo para platicar. Entonces, entre el mismo grupito uh, comentaron, porque a mí me lo dijeron, me dijeron, ¿qué? Porque yo, um, y gracias a Dios, ellos, pues como te digo, nunca me dijeron, no hagas eso, no te pintes el cabello, no te eh, dejes las uñas largas, uh, pues allá pues era muy difícil para pa comprarse un rim o algo, porque pues no, pues sí se lo robaba mi hermana, poquito pues nada más porque pues en un rancho no puedes traer las pestañas largas. Y, y gracias a Dios pues hablamos del tema, o sea, nunca se toca ese tema si yo soy o no soy, uh, porque saben lo que soy, mm, ellos saben que la madre sabe y los padres saben lo que tiene de hijo y saben que si van a ser distintos porque luego se nota. Um, yo de chiquillo fui muy afeminado, uh, era más de que a veces me gustaba jugar con muñequitas y, y a veces me gustaban los vestidos de niñas, pero nunca me los ponía. O sea, y era de que me gustaba jugar a la cuerda, a la pilingrina y los padres te van dando cuenta. Y ya como vas creciendo, te van dando cuenta que, que tú vas a ser distinto a los demás. And it is an issue that has been affected by my community. And so we need to address it. As uncomfortable as it is, um, as uncomfortable as having to look at family members or friends and just want to talk about it, air it out, um, the conversation has to start. You know, it has to start somehow. That's the thing though, we don't want to know. Um, it's probably just because we don't want someone to know or be disappointed. Like I said, it goes back to being disappointing your parents or something like that because lo especially here in this culture and this community, we're so close-minded and um, anyone who's a homosexual, who's gay, comes to a lot of bullying and there's You can be called a mari maricón, una mariposa, una... And then for girls, they could be um, una marimocha. Or you could be called a dyke or a butch or all that stuff. But why, you know, talking would be better? Is that talking makes, you know, people safer or...? I think talking, and, like, causes people to learn about it. If you don't talk about it, you're not going to learn about it. I mean, how are the most lectures provided in college? because the professor talked about it, because the professor keeps on talking about it, and that's how he passed on knowledge, by talking.